Failure is a good thing. Hmm. Why do some kids look at their parents after a swing and miss? Why do some kids start crying after they walk a batter? And then why does that kid walk four more batters after they start crying? Because they are afraid of failure. They're afraid to fail. Guess what happens when you are afraid to fail? You fail. Furthermore, you learn nothing from that failure, all while having zero fun in the process. Three strikes, you're out. Now, these attributes of kids wanting to please their parents and not make mistakes will mature into great qualities when they're adults. But as a child, all we see is tears and self-implosion on the pitcher's mound and the batter's box. Self-destruction. So how do we fix it? As parents and coaches, we create a culture where failure is embraced as a teaching moment for all the kids. Embrace it. I tell my players, if you are paying attention to everything I teach and you are putting in 100% effort, then I like when you fail. Fail. That's when we learn the most. Last night at Sandlot, I had a batter repeatedly swing and miss five times in a row. Our rule at Sandlot is we swing until we hit it. After that fifth swing and miss, this six-year-old was on the verge of tears. Probably saw a tear coming down the, the cheek. He had listened to everything I had taught, paying attention, uncomfortable eye contact. He was putting in 100% effort, yet he was still failing. I paused the game and declared to the 20 kids that this is a perfect time for a hitting talk. The hitter was a little bit late because they were swinging backwards and under the ball. So I had him choke up to speed up the bat, and I gave him two simple positive thoughts. Swing forward to the top of the ball, one and two. I try to teach the do's instead of the don'ts. My mentors have taught me that. Way more productive. Then I let him know that mistakes are good, and you just made everyone a better hitter by your last five swings and misses. I returned to the mound, and before making the next pitch, I re-emphasized a point that holds so many athletes back, holds them back. That point is, it is okay to fail. Is it okay to strike out? Yes. Is it okay to be afraid of striking out? No. The next pitch... Bam! The smile was back, and the ball went sailing. His next time up, he crushed the first pitch. Two for two. Mission accomplished. The first thing I ask a youth coach or a parent is, how's your season going? 99% of the time, their answer is the team's win and loss record, 5-1, and 4-2, and 0-8, oh and uh, or the personal stats of their child, 0 for 4, 3 strikeouts, 2 home runs, whatever it may be. Now, we've all had this wins, losses, and stats are everything culture ingrained in our brain since we were born. But what if that is wrong? What's that? What's that world look like if wins and losses and stats If looking through that lens, what if it's wrong? What if that is just straight up the wrong way to parent or coach? It's definitely worth asking the question. Why? Because kids don't perform better when they're under pressure. They perform way worse. So if it's completely ridiculous to apply pressure into a child's brain, then why do we do it? Especially in a high leverage situation. Because we're human. I did it when I was a young coach. I'm human. So how do humans change a negative culture? There's a problem with youth sports and parenting and coaching. It's negative. It's win at all costs, and it's a problem. So how do humans change a negative culture? One at a boy and one at a girl at a time. That's how we do it. So the next time you see a parent 
or a coach spewing negativity at a youth sports event, lend them a hand. With every negative comment, combat it with a positive one. Kill it with kindness. Teach them by example. Encourage your players to cheer louder. They'll see that. Challenge your players to be more positive. They'll see that too. Have them give elbows to teammates that make mistakes. They'll really see that, and they'll probably dislike it. Good. They're learning. It's a learning curve. Plant a you'll get them next time seed at every baseball field or soccer field or basketball court that you go to. And teach your kids to be allergic to negativity. If you teach the kids, then the parents will pick that up. It's ultimately the kids that will teach the parents how to change this culture. Um, But let's give them a head start. That's it. Bye.